Many people would love to have the ability to fly. The world does look a lot better from above, and my fascination with flight has led me to investigate the habits and habitats of birds. My love for ornithology, the study of birds in my region, led me to research the migratory, reproductive, feeding, and life patterns for certain types of birds that can be observed in this area. For this scientific research project, I was armed with military issue binoculars, a photographic camera, Canon EOS Rebel with extended lenses, an advanced speed and focus paraphernalia, a Sony video camera with high speed sensing capabilities, scientific study resources, a shallow draft Yamaha jet boat, and even more maneuverable Sea Dew Spark personal watercraft. If that sounds like fun at the beach, one should reconsider ornithology. Ornithology is all about patience. It requires for many, many hours in bug-infested hideouts and not disturbing the wildlife or their habitat. They'll trust to come close if you choose to become part of the scenery. No loud noises are allowed, no sudden movements, and absolutely no intrusion close to nesting areas. Unlike my friendly swans whom I know since they hatched, most birds do not appreciate an uninvited visitor, much like my Uncle George who demands a phone call before we show up at his house. He is newlywed, so you may say that he is nesting as well. Ornithology requires a scientific approach, as it is imperative to research every facet in the life of the species under examination. Many birds have very accurate migratory patterns in which can be disturbed by the expansion of human activity in their habitats. Environmental destruction, water, soil, and earth pollution may also impede their very survival. Also, overfishing, civic transportation, illegal hunting, changes in the weather patterns, and the reduction of wetlands, field, forest, and oceanfront breeding and nesting areas have had tremendous impact on the survival of certain species. It is the task of the ornithologist to also detect any dangers and provide solutions with the assistance of the governmental authorities and the EPA. Scientific examination is also inclusive of monitoring the levels of pollution in the area of investigation, as well as the matter in which human activities have disrupted the life of birds. A specific focus needs to be maintained on the stars of the show, birds. Here are some intriguing species I had the honor to observe and study. The American oyster catcher, which is a saltwater species, forms flocks along the shorelines, although in the summer they prefer the cord grass salt marshes. They feed on intertidal invertebrates using a chisel-like bill to break the shells of mussels against rocks. Humid disturbance excludes them from many possibly suitable areas in breeding season. Ospreys usually nest near the water. They have amazing fishing technique. They dive and hit into the water talons first. Population has rebounded from severe losses during the DDT era. The mute swan was introduced from Eurasia, but it's now the most common swan to encounter in the Northeast. The great egret, whose population was reduced by persecution and habitat loss. The great blue heron, who feed on varieties of fish, amphibians, and crustaceans, and are considered a very adaptable species. The herring gull and great black backed gull, who are scavengers that helpfully clean up beaches and harbors. They also prey on eggs, fish, and small crustaceans. As they eat anything available to them, the population continues to expand. They present an enormous threat to weaker species, including birds and sea turtles. Two birds that are directly affected by human interference are the black skimmers and the forester's turns. The former have incredibly extraordinary feeding behavior. They skim the surface of the water in perfect formation using tactile sensors to scoop up small fish and crustaceans. They are extremely vulnerable to changing water levels and even more susceptible to human disturbance because of the presence of aggressive dogs, trash, and increased water pollution. The latter almost went extinct during the 1800s because it was hunted for its feathers. Becoming an ornithologist is certainly a very skilled and dedicated task. It provides one with the opportunity to study the beauty of nature and protect the species that also secure the ecological balance of the planet. We all hope that future generations will inherit a beautiful planet. Pollution is a problem affecting all living creatures, including humans. We all aspire to be like birds and take flight, but birds oftentimes look forward to also reach the ground, rest, nest, breed, feed, and live their lives in harmony with the environment. This will also allow present and future ornithologists to do their job, because without birds around, one more species that will be extinct
will be the ornithologist.